I do need some advice from you, however, regarding some other elements of God's law and how to follow them. Number 8. Most of my male friends get their hair trimmed, including the hair around their temples, even though this is expressly forbidden by Leviticus 19.27. How should they die? Chapter 3. If the Old Testament was taken word for word, this is what would happen today in the 21st century. To further lighten this subject, here is a letter to Dr. Laura Schlesinger. Dr. Laura broadcasts a three-hour-long radio program each weekday on a network of over 500 radio stations in the United States and Canada and has an estimated audience of 20 million people. She holds a Ph.D. in Physiology study of the functions of the living matter, not psychology, as some assume. In her radio show, Dr. Laura Schlesinger has said that, as an observant Orthodox Jew, homosexuality is an abomination according to Leviticus 18.22 and cannot be condoned under any circumstance. The following response was posted on the Internet and is best regarded as an essay clearly meant for a wider audience than just Dr. Laura. It is a general reminder that many belief systems pick and choose their way through biblical teachings in determining what is right and wrong. Authorship has been attributed to several, but remains unconfirmed. Dear Dr. Laura, Thank you for doing so much to educate people regarding God's law. I have learned a great deal from your show, and try to share that knowledge with as many people as I can. When someone tries to defend the homosexual lifestyle, for example, I simply remind them that Leviticus 18.22 clearly states it to be an abomination. End of debate. I do need some advice from you, however, regarding some other elements of God's law and how to follow them. Number 1. Leviticus 25.44 states that I may possess slaves, both male and female, provided they are purchased from neighboring nations. A friend of mine claims that this applies to Mexicans, but not Canadians. Can you clarify? Why can't I own Canadians? Number two, I would like to sell my daughter into slavery as sanctioned in Exodus 21.7. In this day and age, what do you think would be a fair price for her? Number three, I know that I am allowed no contact with a woman while she is in her period of menstrual uncleanliness. Leviticus 15, 19 through 24. The problem is, how do I tell? I have tried asking, but most women take offense. Number four. When I burn a bull on the altar as a sacrifice, I know it creates a pleasing odor for the Lord. Leviticus 1, 9. The problem is, my neighbors, they claim the odor is not pleasing to them. Should I smite them? Number five. I have a neighbor who insists on working on the Sabbath. Exodus 35.2 clearly states he should be put to death. Am I morally obligated to kill him myself, or should I ask the police to do it? Number 6. A friend of mine feels that even though eating shellfish is an abomination, Leviticus 11.10, it is a lesser abomination than homosexuality. I don't agree. Can you settle this? 
Are there degrees of abomination? Number 7. Leviticus 21.20 states that I may not approach the altar of God if I have a defect in my sight. I have to admit that I wear reading glasses. Does my vision have to be 2020? Or is there... Number 9. I know from Leviticus 11.6-8 through 8, that touching the skin of a dead pig makes me unclean. But may I still play football if I wear gloves? Number 10. My uncle has a farm. He violates Leviticus 19.19 by planting two different crops in the same field, as does his wife by wearing garments made of two different kinds of thread, cotton, polyester, land. He also tends to curse and blaspheme a lot. Is it really necessary that we go through all the trouble of getting the whole town together to stone them? Leviticus 24.10-16 through 16. Couldn't we just burn them to death at a private family affair like we do with people who sleep with their in-laws? Leviticus 20.14 I know you have studied these things extensively and thus enjoy considerable expertise in such matters, so I am confident you can help. Thank you again for reminding us that God's word is eternal and unchanging. Your adoring fan.